Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. It's just another beautiful January day here in Northwest Wyoming. I've sure been having a lot of fun skiing with the new Rotofella Explorer and the uh, new boots from both Alpina and Alpha. Well, I've been happy enough with the performance of this new boot and binding system. But as you can see, I've gone ahead and mount up a set of belay objectives with the binding. I'm out today skiing the flanks of Signal Mountain. In my last week's video where I broke the skin track up to the top of that hill and skied back down with my plastic boots, I went back the very next day with this same setup and skied the very same terrain under very similar snow conditions. And it was an interesting comparison. In my first look video, I made the comment that I I wondered how often I would choose this new Explorer and the Alpha Free Boots as opposed to skiing my Scarpa T2s. And some of you may have taken that the wrong way. I know that there's no way that a setup like this is ever going to replace, you know, a steep and deep setup. And it's not going to replace the steep and deep setup in my quiver. We're always trying to decide what's the best gear to take for a particular outing, depending on the snow conditions and, of course, the angle and the difficulty. And there's sort of times where you, you know, you can go either way. Times when you think you might be able to handle it with soft boots and other times when you think, well, this just may be a little bit more than I'm willing to handle with that and want to armor up with plastic boots and active bindings. But you know, that, that is a gray area and that differs for everybody. Some people have great skill with soft boots and they can ski some pretty difficult stuff. Other people, you know, they, that's a little more challenging. But literally, after skiing this for more than 10 outings on all kinds of terrain, for me anyway, at my skill level, this new system is going to be able to move a little bit further up the ladder as far as where I'm willing to trust these. And on both outings, I had a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the control and, and the precision that I had with my plastic boots and my downhill setup. And then when I went back the very next day and skied it with this lighter weight gear, it was, it was fun in a whole different sense. It sure was liberating and, and it was free being able to climb up that hill with, you know, so much with lighter gear. And then, of course, coming down, you know, I was able to ski it. It was fine. I didn't have quite the precision and quite the control that I did with my other set, you know, as you would expect. But it was certainly skiable and it was fun. I really get a lot of joy in, in skiing slopes in the lightest possible gear that I can. And I know a, a system like this, you know, is going to be a challenge at times. But I'm going to continue to ski these and, and just see how far I can take it and still have fun. Now, I'm not going to give up on my plastic boots, but that's a whole different type of skiing. So here's a good place to stop and skin up for the climb today. What I'm skiing today is a, is a set of Volley Objective BC skis. And this is a, a downhill ski. It's not a cross-country ski. There's no groove in it. As you can see, it has virtually <laughs> no camber in them. They're really beautiful turners. And I think this is the kind of setup that these bindings were really intended to be used for. You know, it crosses that, that fills that gap between the kind of terrain that you'd want to ski as a cross-country skier and maybe the steep and deep terrain that the plastic boot and AT crowd ski. The big question that everybody has, of course, is, you know, is this going to improve, you know, my downhill capabilities on lightweight gear? And I have to be honest with you, there's a lot of advantages to the binding. But the binding itself is probably the least important in the equation. And as far as, you know, lateral control goes, you know, a good 75 millimeter system is going to give you probably just as much control on the downhill as this new binding does. Now, some people are going to argue that, you know, that you have more leverage with this system. It may be. If that's the case, uh, you know, it's not a huge difference. It's, it, to me, it's not like night and day. You know, the, the real advantage with being able to control skiing downhill with lightweight gear is to have a boot that is supportive. You know, you gotta be able to transfer those forces 
you've got to be able to control those skis with your boots. And if you have a floppy boot, you know, that's difficult to do. It's just so much easier with a stiffer boot. And, you know, there's two parts to the boot. There's the upper and there's the sole. And there's also the contact point, you know, with the ski. And certainly this binding has got good contact. It's got, it's going to keep the boot controlled very, very well. And so far I've been real happy with the control I have with these standard bumpers. I know I've mentioned they're going to come out with a stiffer bumper. And that stiffer bumper is going to allow you to keep your foot flatter. It's going to provide much more resistance. And when those things become available, I'm going to get those and I'm going to give them a try. From what I've skied this winter, you know, a stiffer bumper might offer a little better control. And that would be appreciated and it would be easy and a cheap thing to do. But so far, I just haven't been in any situations where I thought, oh my gosh, you know, I need something stiffer. And I know. You know, I ski mostly soft snow, mostly powder, and where you ski may be a lot different. And I know there's a lot more difficult conditions to ski. Um, and occasionally we get those here. You know, there's certain times of year we have ice, certain times of year we have slush, certain times of year we have heavy snow. It's not every day, it's not like this. <laughs> you know, I, maybe I'll take this opportunity to answer a couple questions that people have had and I mean obviously the, one of them is is you know are these bindings releasable you know would this be a replacement for like a tech toe or an AT system no they, they're not releasable and, and I had a real interesting uh, question from somebody it was they were talking about the toe pinch and they had the unfortunate incident where somebody in their party was skiing in a whiteout and they hit a, they went face first into a snow blank they were skiing 75 millimeter and they their body flew forward, their skis stayed in place, and uh, with that 75 millimeters, they ended up breaking their uh, some bones in their toes. Let's just see how far we can go forward with these. Yeah, I don't know. I they, there's certainly the forward flex on these is is much easier. You know, at this position right here, where the foot is is not completely vertical with these bumpers on. You know, I'm not getting any toe pinch at all, but if I go completely forward where my knees are touched right here, I'm getting toe pinch on this boot, but not on this boot. Well, now that I got my skins on, it'll be a little easier to make this climb. So let's continue on up this hill. I know a lot of people like to ski the 75 millimeter with, you know, a lightweight plastic two buckle boot. Uh, a lot of people are skiing the really old Scarpa T3s and of course the Scarpa T4s and then there's the Garmont Excursion and the Scott Excursion boots. Um, that's a, a very interesting comparison. And as I've said in some other videos, I skied the Scarpa T4s for, for many years. Uh, I actually skied through two different generations of the T4s. And I like the boot a lot. You know, they really offer an awful lot of control. They're certainly a lot more powerful than any other leather boot that's on the market. And I had to finally give up the T4s. I just could not get past the blister problems. And I tried everything and finally moved on to the T2s. That's why I'm not going to really give a comparison with these Alpha Freeze to the T4s is because it's just not an option for me and it's been a number of years since I've skied those boots. You know, unless you can get out and ski the very same terrain, you know, with the very same skis, <laughs> under the very same kind of conditions, you know, one day after another or literally right after another, you know, it's just a lot of speculation as to which is, quote, a better system. You know, any boat and ski can be, feel just perfect on one day and a few days later in different conditions not be working so well. You know, if you're skiing those systems very well and they're working for you, you know, I'm not sure there's a whole lot of reason to jump ship at this point. 
There also was another interesting comment and it had to do with how easy is it to get out of these bindings if you should fall down and I even read a comment where somebody said what happens if you're skiing across the lake and you fall through the ice how easy is it to get out of these skis wow I'll tell you that that thought alone frightens me trying to get out of any skis if you break through and fall through a lake would be something that I would hope that would be possible but certainly difficult you know from my experience uh, the fact that you can push on a button here and and release the boots is helpful but the release is kind of interesting it uh, the boots just don't automatically pop out it's not like on a a tech toe on a AT system where you know the pins essentially spread apart and the boot falls out when you press that lever down what happens is it pushes in the indents and you still got to pull that boot out so it takes it takes a little bit of coordination you have to push in on the lever and also pull back on the boot I think everybody's gonna have to make up their own minds as to whether or not that these bindings are suitable for skiing across the lake with I'll leave that up to you folks to make that judgment Wow, would you look at this? It just doesn't get any nicer than this. So Michael O posted just an amazing video over on Telmark Talk Forum. And uh, he's been using a 360 camera. Um, I've been playing around with mine and uh, the angle that he got was just uh, incredible. I've been trying to figure out exactly how to set up something that would do the same thing for me this is this is what I'm gonna try out today <laughs> I'm a little nervous it uh, it looks like it might uh, lend itself to a broken camera <laughs> <laughs> 